Today I would like to tell you a story. I would like to tell you a story about a project I've been working on for the last year. However, I do not want this talk to be about my life or the achievement of my team. I would rather like to tell you this story to show what a team, a group, a community of people working towards solving a problem can achieve. And how important it is that every individual and every group inside this community give this contribution towards achieving the general goal. So I would like to encourage you to follow along my story and maybe at some point you will start getting the point I'm trying to make. As I mentioned, this talk is about solving problems. So I would like to start by mentioning one problem society is facing today. It's a problem that I'm sure everybody of you had at some point in his life. Every time you took your car and went to work or on holiday, as I'm going to do in a couple of weeks for Christmas with my family, knows of situations like this one. Staying in traffic, in traffic for hours, waiting and trying to come to your destination as far as possible. Well, everybody in the cars next to you is trying to do the exact same thing. And if some of you are adventurous enough to have ever tried to either go to work by train or to go on holiday by airplane, you might have encountered a situation like this one. You might have found out that the experience is not the best one you could wish for. And I would also like to mention another problem which is related to transportation, which is a problem that is not only affecting the way we travel, but the way we live and the way we influence other lives on this planet. Probably many of you in Europe are not familiar with pictures like this one. However, transportation is one of the key factors contributing, contributing to the emission of greenhouse gases and to pollution around the world. Still, over 90% of all transportation systems use some sort of oil-based fuel. And the situation is not getting better since way more people are trying to move into cities and many more people are trying to travel around the world. For the talk today, I would like to propose one solution and talk about a solution proposed by a man which is quite known. However, this problem is getting a lot of attention all over the world, as many more people are realizing the gravity of the situation. The man I would like to talk about could be known for, for many of you. Many of you might know him for his company Tesla, which is building electric cars and trying to accelerate the transition to sustainable transport. Or maybe some of you might know him for the, his company SpaceX, which is building a new generation of rockets and trying to reduce the cost of going to space. But in 2013, he had another idea. Thinking about the problems we were talking before, he envisioned a new transportation system. A transportation system that, according to him, could solve all the problems we mentioned earlier. And so he decided to write a paper and make this idea public. He called this transportation system the Hyperloop. Now, what's the idea behind the Hyperloop? How would it look like? Well, in principle, a Hyperloop station wouldn't look that different from a train station we have today. But instead of having trains and rails in there, you would probably find big tubes and pots, small capsules inside of it. Well, why use tubes? What's wrong with the rails we have today? Well, while once fans find out that when trains are trying to go faster and faster, they experience what's called aerodynamic drag. That's the same effect you have if you pull your hand out of the car while driving. You feel the force against your hand that is trying to lower your speed. The same thing happens to trains as well when they're traveling really fast. So the idea of using the tube is if I build the tube and then I take lots of the air outside of the tube, then everything that moves through this tube can move way faster with less drag. And that's exactly what these pods are for. These pods can transport around 30 to 40 people, and since they experience little aerodynamic drag, they can travel way faster than uh, everything we have today. They can travel up to the speed of sound, which is over 1,000 kilometers per hour. 
That would mean connecting cities like San Francisco and Los Angeles, or here in Germany, Munich and Berlin, in slightly over half an hour. This is the vision that Elon Musk proposed. And, but the paper he published wasn't a complete design, was not something that could be readily built, but rather was a concept, an idea. And so he invited people around the world to start working on this idea and try to make this concept a reality, to contribute with their own skill towards making a final design and, build, and start building tubes. And so companies around the world started to be founded to really work on this design and solve the technical challenges that still need to be addressed in order to have a final system. And other groups around the world started to work with this technology as well. Two years later, Elon Musk had a great idea. He wanted young minds and motivated students to start working on this idea as well. And so what he did is he organized a competition together with his company, SpaceX. This competition is since then known as the SpaceX Hyperloop Pod competition. The idea of the competition is pretty simple. SpaceX built next to the headquarters in California a one or two kilometers long tube that could be used as a test track. And then they invited teams around the world to start developing a Hyperloop pod design and then build a prototype of it. And that's what happened. At the first competition, more than 1,000 teams around the world applied to take part in it. Many student teams in particular around, in the university around the world decided to join this adventure and try to build something. One of the teams that started working on this was a small team of students from our own university, the Technical University of Munich. There were only seven students that started this new project inside a bigger student initiative at my university, which is called VAR, and has since, then, has since 1962 built rockets and satellites. And so since then, this group is known as VAR Hyperloop, because it's inside this larger organization. And they started just seven students thinking big and trying to trying to contribute with their own expertise towards building a Hyperloop design. There were also only seven students working in their free time and working on an idea which had been expressed by Elon Musk a couple of years earlier, but had never been built in real life. Since this picture was taken in 2015, a lot have happened at my university. While this team was still working on the for the first Hyperloop pod competition, a second competition was announced, and so a new group of students decided to start working towards building a second Hyperloop pod, and that's when I joined the team. You can see here the pictures of the two presentations of our Hyperloop pods. You can see a bigger pod, which was designed in a way that intended to look how, how a Hyperloop pod could look one day, with a big compressor up front, for instance. And then a smaller Hyperloop pod designed only towards achieve, trying to achieve the fastest speed in the short track that SpaceX built. Now, I would like to give you an idea of how working a project like this looks like. This is a video showing some clips we took while working on this project. You know, when you start building a Hyperloop pod prototype, it's not like building a car. Everybody knows how a car looks like, but nobody lo knows how a Hyperloop pod looks like. So it takes hours of discussion to decide which technologies to use, what to test, what to bring in your design, and what to build in the end. And even after you spend hours designing and taking preparation to build your pod, it takes then way more hours to prepare the hardware, test the hardware, and then even when everything is tested and everything seems to work, then you have to put everything together, put all the pieces together and try to make it work as a complex part. You can imagine these students worked all in the free time. They worked days and very often nights to, to finish this part in time for the competition. And you can imagine how proud the student team is when then finally their part is completed. 
Well, I like to talk about my team because that's where I spent lots of my time in the last year. There are many other teams around the world trying to build their own Hyperloop pod. Here's a picture of the first competition. You see, every tent belongs to one different group coming from somewhere in the world. There were teams from everywhere around the world. Every team works days and nights on their Hyperloop design, built their Hyperloop pod, and then came to Los Angeles to test them. You can see how many students are working on this project. And only the best students were allowed to join the competition. Many more around the world are working as well. Now, you can imagine how important it is that inside a team, everybody contributes with their knowledge, their expertise, and their time for the team to achieve the goal of joining the competition. Now, before I close my talk, I would like to show a video that I'm very proud of. This was our last test run at the last competition. The goal was to build the fastest Hyperloop pod that could travel through this rather short tube. And this is what happened. Thank you very much. I think my team more than me deserves this applause. But the part you see in the video reached 324 kilometers per hour. And that not only gave us a chance to win the competition, but we actually also met with the man that started all of this. Elon Musk was nice enough to stop by, have a short chat with us, and then take this picture, which we are very proud of as well. Now, I would like to close this talk by making a general point. Now, you, you have seen how much a team can achieve, or at least what a team can achieve when they have a common goal. But you've also seen only a part of all the problems that needs to be solved in order for this to work. So, I would like to invite you to become active and choose the problem you want to solve. I'm sure everybody of you knows some problem that needs to be solved in society. I hope that maybe after the talk today, you're more inspired towards trying to solve yours. While this talk today was a very technical talk, solving a problem which is mainly about engineering, there are many other problems in society that needs to be solved, in social issues, political issues, issues in education, and so on. So maybe if you're not an engineer, you can try and solve a problem yourself. In particular, if you are a student, I always hope that other students, like the one that participated in this project, feel inspired by what my team is doing, and maybe will start to work on something themselves. So please, Pick your favorite problem and start contributing to solving it. Thank you very much.